So welcome to my game of the year. The one game that stood out to me from all of the rest. And let me say, there was a sea of incredible games this year that have been amazing. And I just wanna say that I'm doing an entire video on all the rest of them, okay? So I'll have my games of the year, but this is my game of the year. And it really stood out enough that I wanted to do a dedicated video on it. Now, I will ask you, what is your video game of the year? The one game that stood out for you, that did something special? Let me know and let everybody else know down below so we can try some other games that might have passed by us because man, in the year 2021, a lot of games came out. So let's start. My game of the year is Shin Megami Tensei 5, without a doubt, without a doubt. And I sat and have talked about this with my wife so much. We've gone back and forth. And the one thing that we came up with to say is that it was an easy choice. There was no debate. We were talking and we said, game of the year, game of the year. That was the conversation right there. We both knew. And I think we knew about, it might have been about 20 hours in and it took us about 90 hours to get through the game in our first playthrough. We knew right away at that point, we're like, yeah, you know, because at the beginning of the game, it's, there's some graphical issues, some graphical glitches and stuff like that. There's a bit of slowdown. And I'm like, man, they're really pushing it on the Nintendo Switch. They're really pushing it. And then you get into the gameplay and then you really get into the gameplay and it envelops over you. And all of a sudden you're like, this is super addicting. And that's the thing about the game. It is super, super addicting. If, if you're into Pokemon style of games and you're looking for something a little bit different, something a little bit darker, this is the game to go for. And I want to talk about all the reasons why it's the game of the year. I, just, I don't want to say it's game of the year, that's it. I have to talk about the reasons why. In the Shimigami Tensei series in general, I just love the post-apocalyptic D you know, d down view of the entire world. It's so bleak, it's so barren, it's so horrible, it's horrendous, and you're alone, pretty much. And uh, you're just kind of stranded out there, you're trying to figure out what's going on, and you're surrounded in a world full of demons. And it's very, it's got a lot of crazy themes going on, and uh, there's horror themes, there's, there's like religious themes, there's, there's a lot of that going on, and I like the world setting, the world building, I like that to begin with, all right? And they do a great job on this. And I gotta give them props because they were developing this during COVID times when it was really, really hard to get everybody into the office. You couldn't get everybody into the office. People were working remotely and they accomplished this game. So I bravo on that sense. So, so we have the foundation of the world building, which I love there, but we also have the foundation of the music. And the music in this game it's some of the best RPG music, you know, boss music, battle music that I've heard in years. I, I really love it. Me and Kim are still playing it in the other room. I'll just put on the battle music and play it. And we're like, oh my God, isn't this song so good? It's, it's still hanging on with us that much. And throughout the entire game, the background music paints a beautiful picture of the bleakness, as I was saying, the desperation, the sadness of the entire world. It's brutal and it's wonderful and the music highlights it perfectly and the boss music kicks in the battle music kicks in and gets you into overdrive mode and it works so well for this game perfectly fitting music i love it it's 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 my game of the year music as i say so we got that going on well geez what do we have next we have the story and i kind of touched on that i won't go too much into it for uh, you know, uh, people who haven't played the game, I, this is going to be spoiler-free still, and all that. But it's it's a battle between heaven and hell, and you're kind of caught in between, and you're trying to figure out which way to go, and, and to figure out who you're going to side with in this entire game, and that is a lot of fun. And when you get to the end, it's there's and there's multiple endings that you, that you can do, and you can do multiple playthroughs as well. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with that. And uh, we got to the end of the game, and. It was interesting, we really felt fulfilled. It was like, wow, that was really, that was an epic journey. We really got that feeling. And that's something else I'll say, the length of the game is there. So if you spend your money on this game, you're gonna get your money's worth and then some. On that alone is another selling point for game of the year for me. It's got the gameplay time. Now we have to get into the gameplay. We're in the meat and potatoes of this entire game. 
It's about combat. That's what this game is mainly about. It's about combat. Yes, you're traversing this world, you're talking to demons, uh, you, you're finding out about the storyline, you're collecting things within the world, but it's mainly about being in combat. And so the combat has to be great, right? The combat is great. The engine is awesome. And every time you're in it, you're like, I'm happy to be here. You're not getting burnt out. You're not getting burnt out in the combat because everything is a strategy. Everything is a strategy from just the simple encounters to the boss encounters to recruiting demons and getting them uh, in your party. And that's where the addiction is. And me and Kim talked about this so much, even before we did our review. It's so addicting creating and fusing different demons together. And that's what you're constantly doing throughout the game. That's what the game is. Battle using demons. That's realistically what it is. And the combat engine is awesome. It's great to look at. And here we go into my next thing I want to talk about. The demon designs are so good that I couldn't believe it was done on the Nintendo Switch. And I'm not knocking the Nintendo Switch. And what I think it is, what I think it is, the animation on these uh, demons is really good, but it's the texturing. The texturing is done so well and it, it kind of gives us uh, a feeling that it's not a Nintendo Switch game. I know that sounds weird, but they did a lot of techniques and I don't know what those techniques are, but they really come off as smooth and really unique and really well done, I'll just say that. Uh, and so I was always impressed with the demon designs in the game and the boss encounters with second to none. So very, very happy there. I mean, everything in the game was winning for me. Even the voice acting, which we played the English voice acting, Every voice was perfect. There was never anything I was like, you know, that's not fitting. Every demon felt fitting. Every human felt fitting. And uh, the, uh, that worked into the world setting completely perfect. And so, you know, in the end of the day, I just come away from the game and I look at it from afar and I'm like, this is an all-time classic. This is an all-time classic. And is the Shimogami Tensei series for everybody? I wouldn't say particularly so. I think it's a, a very hard game just to jump into if you never played it. Uh, but no, it's kind of like a, a dark style of Pokemon game and there's a challenge there. There's a challenge there. And that's, that's the thing, you can pick your difficulty level to, to, to kind of warm in. But even in casual, uh, I think is still a bit of a challenge for new players out there. But I think there's a bit of a, a learning curve. But for the people that learn it, get in there, you'll find a deeply rewarding game here and a game that I think people will be talking about for a very, very long time. It was one of the very first games announced for the Nintendo Switch back in the day. And they, they brought this game out and it's fulfilled it. It's, it's hitting it on the ceiling for me. And this was a no contest for me. Like Tales of Arise was nearly there as a game of the year. It is a game of the year, but not my number one. Uh, Shimogami Tensei had everything that I like. It had the combat, it had the music, it had the anime uh, character designs, it had the demon designs that were so good in this dark world setting. And it all came together so wonderfully for me and my wife playing it. We, we love this game so very, very much. And I mean, I did give it a, like a nine out of 10. And the reason why is because there's some graphical issues and some slowdown issues and some things like that and some pop up here and there. So it's not an, an exactly perfect game. But what they were able to do in the Nintendo Switch should be applauded, and it is by me. That is for sure. So that is my game of the year, and it's Kim's game of the year as well. And was it hard? As I say, it wasn't that hard. We were looking at all the games and said, this is the game. It's got everything that we want in a game. For us personally, right? Every every taste is differently. And I know a lot of people that played Shimogami Tensei Five that didn't particularly like it. And I'm like, what? You know, it's like, this is like our, our dream game, it really is. And I mean, and I think in the future, I think there's gonna be uh, you know, PlayStation 4 versions of it, there'll be PC version. This game is not finished for the long run. I mean, it's, it's gonna keep on going for years. They put so much effort into it. I think Nintendo has it for a, a small amount of time, an exclusive for a small amount of time, and then it'll go to every machine. I One day, will I be playing a PS5 definitive version of this game? I think that's probably going to happen and I, do you know what, I think we'll start up a new game and start again on the PS5 if that does happen, but I mean, an all-time classic for the Nintendo Switch and it's nice to have this style of, uh, of a dark style of Pokemon game on the Switch. I'm glad we have these Atlas games on the Switch. Do we need more Persona games on the Switch? Yes, for sure. Persona 5 I would have loved on there. We got Strikers for sure. Uh, we got Nocturne on there. So I'm not complaining too much. I think the Nintendo Switch has really 
turned into the ultimate powerhouse game uh, system. I'm, I love it because I mean, grabbing, grabbing it off the TV into handheld mode. I know it's like five years. I've known this. It's still an incredible thing to be playing an RPG like this on a handheld and then back on your TV. And I love that versatility of it as well. Like everything about this game, absolutely knocked it out of the park for me. So guys. What is your game of the year? Let me know down below. Shin Megami Tensei uh, 5 for 2021 for me. So anyways, guys, until next time.